previously on Fast and Furious. I said it before in the last Fast and Furious, and I'll say it again. It's amazing how many highway crimes have absolutely zero other traffic on the roads. It's a perfect day for a prison break. And if I saw three souped up cars blasting down the road while I was transporting prisoners, I'd probably ready my shotgun, maybe even stop the bus and put the odds ever in my favor. Even though Brian's hitting the brakes, this bus impact should still have blown that car off the road. Instead, the bus flips, the car sticks, and Brian lives. Clearly, Brian's plan for springing Dom includes killing Dom. Never mind any of the non-main character prisoners that died in this horrific crash. Where everyone on board has been accounted for, except for one, Dominic Toretto. Accounted for? Did anyone die? Is this the most remarkable bus crash ever? This news broadcast montage never once mentions fatalities, which is what the news lives for. Where Toretto and O'Connor are now? It's anyone's guess. With the terrible copying we saw in the last film, couldn't they be in LA having beers at the Toretto home without law enforcement knowing about it? Rio porn. Yep, this shithead is back. How's it feel? Feels great. Wait a minute, what the f are you talking about? Be on the other side of a wanted poster. Well, you can't really be on any other side of a wanted poster, can you? You can pick any side and you'll still be on a wanted poster. There's no good side. This Mia putting the baby to bed scene couldn't possibly be foreshadowing her own pregnancy, could it? Elisabi. Oh man, I cannot believe it. It looks like you both could use the payday. Sure, they're poor, so naturally the only possible action to take is Grand Theft Auto. I guess it's a good thing these DEA agents and anyone else on this train who are Americans are super unobservant. What with Brian and Mia's faces plastered everywhere after the prison break. This stupid heist would never work. The chances of anyone seeing your crew alongside the train are much too high. There are many passengers facing the backside of the train looking out windows and would easily see you. These guys fall on their faces to avoid being killed by the dangerous sheet of death they ripped off the train. But in the next shot, they're standing tall, looking like conquering heroes, as if half the crew didn't almost die from their own stupidity. GT40. Wouldn't the plan be prearranged? Because he says this and isn't careful enough to think Dom speaks Portuguese, Dom gets suspicious, and the whole plan blows up in their faces for no reason. And the method of car theft virtually guarantees massive damage to all three vehicles, even though the movie doesn't think so. This car obviously has something in it that these guys want, but why didn't they call some sort of criminal dibs on it before this robbery even started? They could have said, look, you can have any car on that train, but the GT40 is off limits. Change your plans. Wait for my call. They got to Rio yesterday and had no idea until you stepped on this train car you were even coming. What prearranged meeting point could you possibly have under this scenario? Why didn't Mia at least pretend to be going the right way until the dickheads on the train were out of sight? <laughs> Dom throws this guy to the floor, rather than outside, making this fight to the death harder for himself. This movie wants to have everything both ways. Windows don't matter until they do. F*** you, movie. <laughs> yeah, catch up to the GT40, which has a huge head start in this clunky-ass vehicle. Thing comes out of nowhere to imperil the stuff. Access card! Get the access card! Cops here to protect the train don't have an access card to the train doors. This guy picks up a crowbar, but he hits Dom in the back instead of lodging it into his head or neck and causing major damage. Maybe this weird vehicle has a blowtorch on it. Maybe. But for this guy getting kicked and driving the vehicle to be able to reach back and turn on the blowtorch to use as a weapon? Yeah, no. Why haven't you thrown him off the train yet? Brian survives this. Also, wow, that is a lot of dead people for our heroes to steal a few cars, am I right? This train is this f***ing close to the bridge when Brian tells Dom about it, but somehow this will take more than one minute of movie time to actually get there. Car stunts that aren't possible are one thing. Humans living through sh like this over and over? That's sinful. How are there any bad guys waiting for them anywhere near this water? Even if the dude back on the train radioed it in, how are there readily available assholes on standby under the train bridge? All right, I'm gonna leave you in an easily escapable situation with my worst henchman on guard. I'll see you later in the movie. Walmart cuffs. Random guy with gun decides that guns don't have long range capabilities and points it as close as possible to Dom's head. It's easy to look badass when these bad guys are idiots. Where's Vince? That's a good question. Did Vince even know there was a change in plans? He was the first dude off the train and it was only when Dom realized that the other dudes wanted the GT40 that he changed the plan. Something I have to tell you. But I'm sure to be interrupted before I can say it. That was your job! Yeah! The problem with this movie is that we don't know what the original plan was. Who was supposed to do what or if the plan got changed before they got on the train? They never explained. 500 years ago, the Portuguese and the Spanish came here. This business deal will require the history of Brazil in order to move forward. Almost wish I didn't see that. Why did the bad guys bother with this huge operation to steal cars if all they wanted was a chip? They could have hired a pickpocket and an auto mechanic to board the train and find the chip and pull this job off with way less problems. I thought the job was for the cars. This whole movie is predicated on the fact that Dom overheard ZZ say he wanted the GT40 and got suspicious. Because of this suspicion, it leads to a chain of events that didn't need to happen. Why did Dom care if they stole that particular car or not? Why does he care if it has a chip in it? Was he worried that once the bad guys took the GT40, they were going to get screwed over or even killed? We don't know. Nothing is implied or explicitly stated. Wilkes, I want a list of every place within 50 miles. Bus crash, prisoner escape, train accident, marshal barking out orders. This movie is the fugitive. The ground rolls into a hard pack and we lost that track too. Not necessarily. That road hits up through the hills into the favelas. 
It's all dirt a mile from where you were. Okay, but don't tracks become really hard to find after a day or so because of people driving over the dirt and walking over it? Rio Porn 2, Fast Furious Felicio. I didn't see one damn dirt road on their way up here. Lots of cobbled streets and concrete and whatever you want to call it, but certainly not something so easy to find tracks that they went straight to the hideout. A hundred million plus in cash houses? That's how it keeps it off the grid. Wait, what? He's trying to keep the location of cash houses off the grid? And has commissioned a custom computer chip and software interface that is then plugged into regular devices? That puts it on the f***ing grid! Just use ink and paper! It does not get any more off the grid than that! Once again, assholes don't bother finding the other potential exits and guarding them before going in for an attack. How did he miss? Two full minutes of discount born ultimatum. Felicia. This is the third time someone's pulled a gun on Dom this close to him. DSS guys shoot everyone except one of the main bad guys. Let's go. By the way, I'm pregnant. Oh, forget it. Brian and Mia survived this. Dom did not lose this freaking necklace. Last time we saw him, it was perfectly fine around his neck and no danger of slipping off. Just put pregnant. Well, maybe. I did just jump off of a roof into another roof a minute ago, but last time I checked, pregnant. All these guys are his names on a list. They come up, we take them down. Not a phone call more, not a bullet less. Whatever that means. I know you mean we don't ask any further questions, but that's just silly. Anything else? Yeah, we tracked the owner off the vehicle ID. Which we should have already known, considering they were in the DEA's possession just a day ago. That's just it. I don't remember shit about my dad. Sudden character backstory is sudden and cliche. And considering the pending baby, super convenient. It's sudden venient cliche. We're gonna do one last job. We're gonna take all of Riz's money. Here's the Fast and the Furious franchise officially turning the keys over to Ocean's Eleven. We're gonna take all of Riz's money, every dime of it, and disappear. Why not just disappear? Wouldn't that be easier and safer? I guess you might need money to start a new life somewhere, but Jesus, if you're that addicted to stealing, I think I'm gonna have to start considering you the bad guys of this series. Oh, I see. You're going to take the three or four weeks to debate on the right guys, then contact them, then wait for them to get to Rio, and then take down the crime boss you have no real beef with whatsoever. Oh, sh**. Tyrese dragged this movie into this sh**, didn't he? Also, how are you gonna coordinate and communicate with all these people while The Rock is actively seeking you out? And what? None of your former associates are being bugged or followed or anything? Sexy legs, baby girl. What time do they open? Jesus, even we wouldn't say some bullshit like this, but movie gets away with it because I have no idea. Also, this is a convergence of all the franchises. Now we have Too Fast, Too Furious and Tokyo Drift thrown into this mess. Eventually, they'll all be joined by the Expendables. Because we got a job. Instead of escaping Rio, we've decided to target the biggest crime boss in the city and steal his money. We think that's justifiable because one time we tried to steal a car that he wanted to steal and he chained us up for a bit before we escaped. Don't ask any questions, just listen. This is what constitutes security at this place. Guy owns the whole city and he can afford security cameras on the outside of the building to make sure something like this doesn't happen. Meanwhile, he has four on the naked counting chicks. A casa do Leblon. Random Reyes soldier plays the pronoun game with Reyes so that he has to ask who the hell they are. We buy some casas. There's no reason to simply up the security or have more guys guarding it. Nope, just put it all in one place. Why not? If he's moving into a police station, he's got some serious brass in his pocket. Kind of makes you wonder why he bothers with 10 different secret money houses, if he can just openly stash his cash in the police station. This just went from Mission Impossible to Mission and freaking Sanity. Yeah, earn that paycheck, Tyrese. Enhance it. Zoom and enhance cliche. The faces are covered. Run it through FRS. Facial recognition software? But you just said their faces were covered. The beauty of public offices? Public records. Even in Brazil? It took the U.S. until the Freedom of Information Act for most to become public, and even then I'm not sure police station blueprints count. He says Caucasian. Oh, that's a tan. No, a tan? Jesus Christ. So of course the box that Tyrese brings in goes right in the room with the safe, because whenever you make a stupid plan with 1% chance of it working, it works. If you had a f***ing camera robot in this box, then why even go to the trouble of trying so hard or at all to get them to let you into the evidence room physically? Was it just to create some bullshit comic relief? Also, these cops on the take from Billionaire Crime Lord don't have cameras in the evidence room that contains his vault of billions in order to see this RC car sh**. Movie depicts exactly what it's like watching these movies. O'Connor, let's go get some cars. Okay, but just as a reminder, this is all just for revenge. You're doing all this to steal from a dude that f***ed with you one time over a car that you were in the act of stealing. Thinnest premise ever. Yes, let's collectively enjoy the hot asses of girls who aren't my sister that you knocked up. Word on the street is a lot of people looking for you too. And yet... What? You didn't think we'd recognize you? After the last movie? No, actually. We assumed Brian was unrecognizable to the street racing world since they let him back in undercover after he f***ed over everyone in the first film. But whatever. Just get to the f***ing race already. Car for car. You want to come and get it? If the feds ID'd his car from a traffic cam, how the f*** is Dom able to drive it anywhere in this city without being found? Aren't they searching for it via satellite every 15 minutes? <laughs> where, where, where'd you get that from? 
Papa Smurf? Okay, Tyrese, we need to talk. I'm beginning to wonder if you even deserve to keep earning paychecks. Please call me. The highly wanted Dom and Brian, being tracked by the entire Rio police force and the DSS, can not only find a space where no one can find them, it's also big enough to simulate the police station they're about to rob. Oh look, while the feds are actively hunting you with satellites, you can have a ginormous safe delivered to some warehouse without anyone anywhere getting suspicious. There's still another problem. Palm scanner. Which I somehow didn't notice, despite my zoomed in RC car camera view of the thing. More Rio porn. Fast Five gangbang. Hobbs specifically told his crew he wanted them to follow Ray to the point of knowing how much he shakes it when he goes to the bathroom. Nobody from the DEA here today. Ah, not only did you stop for a change of clothes, you also made sure to choose fingerprint-friendly material. Nice. So did he just like slap that ass or did he like grab and hold on to it? I know you're kidding, but no. It was like he was actually trying to help you rob him with the way he touched her ass. Guys, 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 we have a problem. Yeah, the whole team just got burnt. You mean just now? That's convenient, since we saw all of you getting investigated 17 minutes ago in movie time, which is like an eternity in real time. This did not just happen, despite the movie wishing it did. Roman's right. I think we need to get some fresh air. You, people did not speak this vaguely. You just wanted the audience to wonder what he meant. We got a hit! 70s Charger! The f***? How did this thing not work properly the night of the street race earlier? You turn around and put your hands behind your back. I don't think so. Seems like he could have waited this out and got Dom and Brian later when there weren't so many people around, but that's just me. This is Brazil! Something that Hobbs' local agent Elena should have been able to tell him. But seeing how Hobbs talks to her, she probably thinks she's a 1950s housewife at this point. Guys, I don't know if you realize it, but this is the moment when the stars of The Pacifier and Tooth Fairy finally squared off. The only reason this necklace bullshit is in the movie is so that Dom could have another I Miss Letty scene with a woman who misses her husband. Man, they really shot for the moon on their helicopter shot budget for this movie, didn't they? The only way we're gonna beat the cameras is with... Invisible cars. And I know just where to get them. If it's so easy to steal cop cars, why didn't they do this in the first place? Meanwhile, security at a souped-up cop car mecca is extremely lax. They probably fed the dogs steaks, slipped the guards sleeping pills in their coffee, and found a way for security cameras to not exist. Next two lights. These f***ing idiots are actually going to drag race stolen police cars in Rio right now. Also, isn't this a pretty f***ing stupid race? Aren't all four of these cars identical? Shouldn't this end in a four-way tie? Welcome to a world with zero rules, ladies and gentlemen. My brain has officially ended itself watching this scene. I mean, does Rio have a strict nobody out past 9 p.m. curfew or some shit? Here's Mia, wanted by Brazilian and U.S. forces, openly shopping in a public market. Because screw you, we'll do what we want. Fitz, what are you Quiet. doing? Quiet! They've been tracking you. Oh, I see. Mia is being followed by the drug lord soldiers, not the cops, and by Vince, conveniently. Grace's guys were waiting for me at the market. And that's all they were doing, just sitting there waiting, until Vince showed up to save me. I don't know why they haven't started tracking you dickheads yet, but enough of that. Hey, Vince! Dom agrees to let Vince take part in the heist, which is fine. A nice family moment. But doesn't that mean the entire plan has to be reworked to include him? Or at least he needs to spend all night studying to learn his role? Family is one thing, but this is sort of careless if you ask me. We're less than 24 hours from the biggest celebration of our life. Movie that is over two hours long has time for a long, premature celebration scene. Hey, wait, wait, hold on a second. So... <laughs> Did he just smack the ass or did he grab it? Haha, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, that's an inside joke that we don't know the context for, but hilarious nonetheless. Took me a while to find that tracking chip! Which had little or no bearing on the story. Also, this doesn't explain how they all of a sudden know where the hideout is, despite the fact that they should have found it way earlier in this movie. Super important cop mission goes out the window for mono e mono fisticuffs. How the f*** did they know the DSS people were going to drive through here? Also, does this movie know that it just stole a page from Clear and Present Danger, a movie where the villain was played by the exact same actor who plays the villain in this movie? Look how many poor people in this poor part of Rio have f***ing satellite television. And how much does it cost there for American-only dish network? This ambush rescue seems to have a high likelihood of killing the people being rescued. Movie's long string of unconsequences continues. But I'm sorry. I fell asleep there for a minute. What's going on? Did we win? Somehow all this guy's men died in the shootout, but he lived, which is probably only because he already had lines in the movie or something. Vince got shot, and the movie actually expects me to feel bad about it. Hideout eulogy. Meanwhile, all the other good guy thieves are halfway through the police station heist, right? I mean, <laughs> how much f***ing time has passed since they tore out of here? It's a suicide mission. That's your man over there on the table. Yeah, but the original plan didn't even include him, right? I'm in. You saved my life, so the law no longer matters. And in fact, I'm going to break that f***ing law with you. We can't just go sneaking around anymore. You weren't even sneaking around at all. You were brazenly shopping in street markets and participating in street races. Well, it's a good thing that all of these police officers are bad guys, and none of them are actually just innocent men protecting the police station, because this might seem rash. All that nonsense about hairpin turns and fast cars avoiding video cameras and the movie is going to ultimately have them steal the entire safe through tow cable brute force. Because if you're still watching, you certainly don't care. Why wasn't the original plan to get an armored vehicle and do this? A couple of fast muscle cars can just pull... 
How much was it ludicrous? 10 tons of top of the line security. Out of a fucking wall. Can't we agree at this point that this is where the cars would flip over from, you know, all the physics? I'd complain about the terrible aim, but I'm more concerned about this zillion ton safe being dragged by two American made cars. Well, the plan's working. You guys have every corrupt cop in Rio on your tail. How do you know that all of them are corrupt? Some of these guys, I don't know, might just be doing their job. Dom and Brian very likely kill lots of people and cause millions of dollars of property damage because they're trying to get back at a guy who just wanted a computer chip from a car seized by the DEA. I'm still trying to figure out if this plot is even real. They're now pulling a safe that is crashing through a store. I wish this safe were magnetized so we could watch with hilarity as they pull all the cars and boats and planes and jewelry and basically all that from Spider-Man 2. Now Dom's car is pulling the safe and the other car by itself because there's a great disturbance in the force. Not the Star Wars force, mind you. The force described by Isaac Newton is disturbed. <laughs> Brian laughs because he doesn't yet realize how many innocent people he's killed during the scene. Anytime this cadre of police officers chasing Brian and Dom want to shoot for the tires is okay with me. Why are they still firing guns anyway when that's been proven ineffective in this movie? License and registration, please! <sighs> please cut another check to Mr. Gibson. Wow, that's like murder. How has no one in this movie said the word Hemi yet? It was always the plan. Take care of Mia. How was it always the plan when the original plan before The Rock came on board did not involve you f***ing dragging the safe out of town like this? Also, Hero sacrifices himself to save the other's cliché. I guess this is entertaining for many people. With nothing being grounded in any realism at all, we just accept that Dom's pulling a 10-ton safe with this one car right now, maneuvering it in such a way that he can guide the safe anywhere he wants it to go. I think this movie is basically just telling you, relax, it's only a movie, which I f***ing hate. Now the safe and all its weight and momentum can suddenly pull Dom's car in another direction. I guess it was waiting for the movie to allow it to do what it should have done way back at the police station. Guy about to shoot another guy gets shot at the last second by some surprise ex machina asshole cliche. It's a hell of a mess. Beyond all the damage to Rio and all the likely fatalities, we're now left with a Rio that currently has no living police department. To quote the kid from Die Hard with a vengeance, it's Christmas, you could steal City Hall. Just come tomorrow, I will find you. He's already allowed them to do this crash the safe through Rio thing. He doesn't owe them anything anymore. His character in no way benefits from letting them have 24 hours to go play hide and seek. Hobbs lets these guys go and doesn't check the safe until after they're gone. You guys just carved out a 10 second window. A 10 second window to unload a 10 ton safe into a garbage truck and switch it with another 10 ton safe before anyone notices. And despite your considerable driving skills, something you've never practiced in your life is going to go off without a hitch and fool everyone. So you somehow plan this bullshit discreetly in a matter of minutes after The Rock joined the cause? Which is complete bullshit. Cop that tried to bust our heroes ends up respecting them so much he laughs upon learning they got away with it cliche. I know they've been given 24 hours, but I can't believe Hobbs doesn't raid this hideout again. Part of the deal was that they couldn't take the money, and he knows they switched the safes, but he decides to lay off for some stupid reason. Let that be a lesson to you kids, stealing is totally okay, as long as you steal from a bigger head than yourself. Unearned romantic coupling? Aw, they got together because their significant others died, didn't they? But they have so much in common beyond the tragic deaths that tied them together. You need to look at that. The irony is, we are looking at that, but Hobbs can't look at that because she's turned the wrong way. Well, well, Letty's not dead. I'm sure there will be some terrific explanation for this, considering that dude Phoenix from the last movie asked Dom, You remember her thing? Last time I saw it, it was burning. Probably just a twin sister or something. Poor, long lost, previously unknown and dead twin sister. Give me the damn veggies. I once caught a fish this big. Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. I hear your sister is very beautiful. And your wife moaned like a whore when they ravaged her. Again. And again. What I want out of each and every one of you is a hard target search of every gas station, residence, warehouse, farmhouse, hen house, out. This guy is, he's Old Testament. Blood, bullets, wrath of God. Fire and brimstone coming down from the skies. Rivers and seas boiling. Forty years of darkness, earthquakes, volcanoes. The dead rising from the grave. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together. You realize we're talking about going up against the most powerful guy in all of Rio? Yes, we are. Then we're going to need a team. You think we need one more? All right, we'll get one more. Hey everybody, if you have an interest in a book about disabled superhero kids, I just happened to write something like that. And you can now pre-order the ebook version. The audiobook is coming soon as well.